Hey Otto, what's for dinner today? Oh, it looks tasty. Yeah, everyone enjoyed it as I can see. Well, today is your lucky day, as I'll teach you how to get so many fish that you won't ever need these awful mush fries again. This is Aiming for Gaming, and here's my infinite Paco farm. Who left to mate it? Let's check how this farm works. The whole farm represents a rectangle with 10 blocks width and 11 blocks height, which means that it will fit into two standard floors of classic base design. The farm is split by doors into several rooms. The tentile room where all access critters are living, the room for regular Paco fry eggs, the room for tropical fry eggs and gulp fry eggs, and the breeding room with four Pacos inside. All four Pacos inside this room are tamed, get proper food supply from a feeder to get plus two to happiness and enough room to feel comfortable. This combination results in an insane plus 900% reproduction rate. With such a rate, all Fupakos in this room rapidly lay out eggs roughly every one and a half cycles, which are then picked by the automation grid and transported to corresponding incubator zones, where they incubate to fries and then move into the critter's room. The process repeats until at least one Paco in the breeding room dies. This is controlled by a critter sensor, which opens an automated door leading to the breeding room, allowing a new Paco fry to jump there and refill the room. The sensor revelates the number of critters in the room and closes the automated door, and the process continues. As Pacos in the breeding room are tamed, their fries are also tamed, so they eat from a feeder and take their time until they become fully grown and start laying out eggs. When the door is closed, small Paco fries jump straight into the critters room pool, where they will stay for the rest of their life. Tropical and gulp fries will always go to this pool after they finish incubating. Now let's check how this works in detail. The right conveyor loader is responsible for taking tropical and gulp fry eggs to move them to a separate incubator zone, as we don't need them in the breeding room. The left conveyor loader takes only fry eggs as input to make this system work continuously. The middle conveyor loader is used to collect clay, paco fillet, eggshells and polluted dirt. In other words, everything that this farm produces. The top after sweeper collects eggshells from both incubator zones as well as clay from the deodorizer. The bottom after sweeper has access to all conveyor loaders and also the critter room aquarium, as it also periodically produces eggs. It is very important to keep incubator zones from the bottom after sweeper to avoid it infinitely moving eggs in cycles. The conveyor railing system is pretty straightforward, with two lines moving eggs and one line moving the produced materials and food away. Automation wire is needed for one door only, and critter count sensor is set to check only critters and send a green signal if this value is below 4. The power supply is needed for two after sweepers, three conveyor loaders and one deodorizer, 605 watts in total. The fish feeder is set to feed Pacos with seeds, but for initial taming process I recommend using algae, which is faster due to the Pacos eating it more frequently. You might ask, why do we need to separate Paco fries from other eggs? The answer is simple, because this way you can control the temperature and liquid for only one Paco type. You need only 4 Pacos for breeding anyway, so simplifying this process will make your life much easier. Another important note is that you need a tentile room to allow Pacos in this room to lay out eggs as well. If the room is too small, they won't breed. Their pool is so small, because you'll never get a pool big enough to fit all of them anyway. And Pacos also have pretty complex movement mechanics, so it's better to let them be as static as possible. Eventually, when a Pacos life comes to an end, you'll get 1000 Paco fillet. You can cook it using the grill to get 1600 kilocalories of cooked seafood with plus 3 quality. Or even combine it with barbecue in the gas range to cook surf and turf. An excellent recipe of plus 4 food. The system has two potential drawbacks. The first is that some polluted oxygen is not being processed by the deodorizer. The second is that sometimes two Paco fries might fall in the pool, slowing down the breeding process until some other Paco dies. But it happens rarely. And that's it for today. If you want to watch more guides, consider subscribing, as I have many on my channel and you won't miss any by doing so. By the way, clicking the like button on this video will show me that you enjoyed it. It's very important to me and motivates me to make more guides for you. I hope you have achieved what you are aiming for today. Thank you all for watching and see you later!